Recording. Hey everyone, this is episode 458 of the Utina Cast, being recorded on the 14th of February 2023. We'll get going on the proper uh, podcast here in a sec. Right now, this is the pre show. This is the raw version of it that goes out with all flubs and so on intact. I don't see this, this stream starting yet, so let me. Let me make sure that this, that the Twitch is working correctly, that I have everything good. Okay, it seems to be working fine. I don't know why it's not showing on this other one. But it does seem to be uh, going. If anyone's having any issues with the stream, please let me know. This is the raw version of the show, which goes out with any flubs and errors all intact. And then we do put this out... Uh, we, we are recording this. We, we put it out on YouTube, but the audio gets cleaned up, and we do try to correct things if there are any uh, factual errors that we find, you know, that we catch or whatever. And then we put it out as a podcast the next day. So let me go ahead and let every, let the world know we are streaming, and let then we'll get going on the show. Know. We're just about at the top of the hour. The timing is pretty darn good. And tweet yeah. your tweet. Uh, happy Valentine's Day if you're doing that sort of thing. Happy Valentine's! Let's see. Mm-hmm. Twitch.tv slash RutinaCast. All right, there it is. I'll see if I can do a, a re. There it is. Okay, good. Sometimes uh, Twitch has been very weird lately. All right, so let me get this down in the corner. I think we're just about ready to go, and it is the top of the hour, so uh, that is all all for the good. And let me see if I can actually make this bigger, move this over. I'm just kind of doing a little futzing around. Also, let me get to the top of the show notes. Yeah, just got to get thing. All right, I'm going to, if you're ready, Kitty, and I'm going to get some water and then we'll go. Ready to go. (sighs) Okay, going in five. I'm still thinking of that one about three or four episodes ago where Mm -hmm. I started (laughs) coughing. Swallowed water into my, or aspirated some water and started coughing Mm -hmm. like a maniac. All right, one sec. All right, go on now. Hi, and welcome to the Utini Cast, the podcast that has placed information vital to the survival of the rebellion into the memory systems of this of this R two unit. Wow, I did not say that very well, did I? Not <laughs> I'm not going to redo it. <laughs> Screw it. I, I think it's good. This is episode 458 being recorded on Tuesday, February 14th, 2023. I'm your host, Chill, and with me is my co-host, Kitty Kisses. Hey, Kitty. Hey, Chill. (laughs) And what have you been up to since the last show? Well, I have been playing my trooper. Mm Mm-hmm. And I have been having a lot of fun with her. Nice. Um, Got her to level 80. We are just entering Kotfi. And nice. uh, mm-hmm. I've been playing this through. I tried to romance uh, Jorgen, mm-hmm. but evidently it didn't take because <laughs> I no? got to the I got to the last parts where, you know, the last conversations that you have with them uh-huh. and there was just no options to flirt. So oh. I guess he wasn't interested, you know, like, hmm. whatever. So the, I the, decided the female what? trooper one is weird. I remember there's yeah. like. Yeah, there's also no way to back out of it either. Like, nope. if, once you start flirting, you basically are on the romance track with him. It's very right. weird that way. Like, the, some of the other ones are a little more clever, where there's like ways to back out, and there's and there's definitely like yeah, and it definitely flirts later in, like almost the last conversation. You might um, you might check like your mail to see if he follows does follow up romance um, mail. He's he's out. I'm He's, already on to a new love. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we'll open up the barrel of new love one. Hey, you know <laughs> new what? love messages. You lose, uh, Catman. <laughs> so uh, when since we started coffee and we didn't have a romance, and I've romanced Lana, I don't know how many times, mm-hmm. um, we decided to go with Theron. 
Nice. So, which is, I, I've been enjoying. I like, I mean, I didn't like Theron until I romanced him for the first time. And uh-huh. then I realized, you know what? Theron's, a, Theron's all right. So right. Have you ever done the visiting that? I haven't done it in years. So okay. So. Have you done the other um, the other romances that are possible in Coffee Cotet? So I have done. I uh, think I've Kav? done them all. Okay, and you've done Arkin even. I've done Arkin, which is really small. It's short, short but kind of interesting. I like. I it. even, I even did. Uh, was it Ken Val? Oh right, right, and on Osis, yeah, when Ken yeah. Val returns. That's yeah, a so, v- bizarre one, but it's very interesting. Yeah, I'm like, man, I'm, I'm kind of afraid to kiss him, but I'm curious. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm curious. Well, it's, so, yeah. And like I said, I've always, uh, I, I've, I've romanced Lana so many times, and I, I like the character Lana a lot. But this time around, I decided that, you know, our character does not like Sith, so mm. we're we're mean to Lana. Which is, which is great because <laughs> I haven't seen, you know, I haven't seen the options in a long time. I don't remember them at all. So it's, it, it's fun. It's, it's funny too, because, uh, she's, you know, she's pretty snarky at times mm-hmm. or she can be, but you know, with that, yep. her, uh, with her demeanor, you know, it's, it's. I'm having fun with it. And what and abilities I, does she have? Uh, she has, so she's a trooper in story, and then what? She's um, a trooper. She's an arsenal. Okay. A uh, bounty hunter. But lately, I have fallen back in love with operative. Hmm. The okay. burst spec operative. I forget. The backstabby what. one. Yeah. It man, I love that. It's, and it's, I found some tacticals and mm-hmm. some uh, some implants that I have. So she does really good AOE damage too. Oh, okay. Which makes it really fun because I'm not a min maxer. I don't really care if the character that I'm playing does the maximum damage possible. Right. But I do like to have a very mobile um, mm-hmm. DPS. Right. And she's both. And right. It's, I'm I'm having so much fun between your little that, hollow traverse and then the rolls. It's pretty right, good stuff. And yeah. And I got the, I got a, uh, forgot what it's called. Something about mobile or, or something like that. It's a, a tactical. Mm-hmm. And every time you, it used to be on armor, but you mm-hmm. know, some of the older armor, but right. it's you, you get 30% healed. Mm-hmm. And you get oh that 75%. one seventy five percent oh Vic- my victors God. or the victorious victorious yeah it is right so fun they quietly so added fun. um like some of the old armor sets like the generic armor yeah. sets into the implants so you can get the victorious there's a couple of others mm-hmm. that they added as well from those but I think that's sort of the, in some ways the most interesting one um, yeah really good for solo stuff really really, really good. good. And really yeah. good for, I was playing on the Arsenal, and I don't stand around a lot. I like to move around, and, mm-hmm. and by the end of the kill, I like to be on top of the target. Mm-hmm. So you can lose. Just, <laughs> yeah, just, maybe that's what it, why I'm so like uh, inclined to run towards <laughs> Towards the danger? Of, yeah, <laughs> even though I'm, I'm uh, ranged, I still phew, try to get in there. But I, because I mostly play uh, melee, mostly. Right. Are you pretty good at like, um, like swap turning your character around and doing the jetpack so you can go yeah. forward with it? Oh yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. Swapping I, your camera I around again. It, and it's he, definitely a skill. It's an interesting it, skill. Yeah. Yeah. It's you. Uh, <laughs> it's so funny because uh, in my head I'm like, oh, you know that trick. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, everybody knows that. <laughs> yeah, because like, everyone wants to go forward with it. They don't yeah, always want to go backwards. Think of that. Yeah. But uh, so anyway, I was playing the arsenals, having fun with it, mm-hmm. um, enjoying the, you know, that um, the mobility that that um, mm. tactical, not the tactical, the implant is giving me. But then I was going to do some you know, some stealthing around and, oh man, I am, I have, I had so much fun with it that (laughs) I, I don't, I think I went like two days without even switching back to Arsenal and I had played 
the majority of my playtime playing Arsenal, but mm. man, I, operative is so fun. It is, yeah. And it's so funny because you know the the sound that it makes when you shiv someone that shink. Mm -hmm. I love that sound when I'm playing an operative, but oh my god, in PvP when I'm getting shanked, I get furious when I hear that sound. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, and it's pretty popular too. I mean, yeah, um, yeah I think. Uh, I'm going to be trying. Uh, well, I'll talk about this in a, in a minute, but yeah, I'm going to be doing my 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 dot spec. Um, and there are people who do play the dot spec in PvP as well, but right. I think most people sort of go for the burst spec because it's it's slightly better in PvP just because um, the overall damage is about the same, but because you have these burst windows, you know, mm -hmm. like if you stun someone or someone else who is also attacking the same target stuns them for you. You know, that way you have you have a chance to do all the damage you need to and get them killed before, you know, before they're able, right. able to, you know, pop their cooldowns and so on. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So anyway, having fun with that. Nice. Um, I've been working on a room in the basement that Kitty and I are um, hmm. kind of we're upgrading. Right. You've mentioned it before and it was like yeah. uh, the guy had moved out and you're getting ready oh. for potentially for someone to move in again is that yeah the, we're is, gonna we have already got right? someone yeah we got somebody ready to go on it we're just kind of we wanted to take our time a little bit but okay you know i i think it's time to really kick a little butt on that room so <laughs> we got a big sunday plan to go to home depot and get some stuff and right make let's make some dents in this so looking forward to that nice and what else? Oh yeah, I I tried PTS. Mm, I got nice. onto PTS. I've been trying to spread the word about PTS. Get in there, everybody. Um, constructive criticism on any bug reports and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Please do it. And uh, I I couldn't get. I didn't get a ting. I ran oh. I ran some dailies, but I I I still haven't got a chance to play any pvp i i don't know the, the play times that i'm on aren't active enough to uh you know for for pvp to queue okay so i'm kind of sad <laughs> but i'm gonna keep trying i'm gonna keep trying nice and uh what else i think that's it that's it for me I'm I'm okay. a little I forgive me I am I've been up since 4 a.m. I'm a little <laughs> I'm a little loopy. Oh, it's all good. <laughs> but that's it for me, Joe. What's up? What's up? All on? right, let's see who uh, Twitch is allowing us to see in the viewers. Uh, let's see. So zero one L is here. One fifty two Domino. Lisi Dra Darklight Smooth Wolf. Drapsonat, Fox Snipey ninety. Uh, Gick Gok, I guess is the pronunciation. Immortalized Love, I'm always guessing I'm from pronunciations. Kata, Kitty mm -hmm. Treats is here. Lurks, Robe Games, Starry Sabers here. Swordmaster, hello everyone. All right, so uh, I got a new webcam actually. I was just, it was shortly after the last episode and I think one other, I, it was really shortly after it and I just um, just went to start a stream and nothing. <laughs> oh, <laughs> the old no. webcam just died. It was it'd been like almost twelve years since I bought it. Ah, what a true. Yeah, I bought it. You know, shortly before kind of getting ready for st starting. You know, to, to do the the podcast. So it's been a long mm -hmm. time. It was a very old, simple one. I really liked it uh, because it like it always worked. There was nothing fancy about it. You know, it had no. There's you know there's nothing really tricky about it at all, uh, but I, I always really liked how it, how simple it was and how how well it worked. So I bought another one from the same maker, Logitech, and obviously it's more modern, but it's not super fancy. It's good. It's pretty nice. Yeah, I can tell the the video quality is definitely a lot higher. I must I'm mucking around with the settings. Like right now, the the colors the colors seems like a little overly bright. Uh, but I'm kind of okay with that because um, when I when it was at its sort of naturalistic settings, because the lighting in my room is very yellow, um, it made everything look yellow. Like 
the the walls all looked yellow you know my my face was way was you know it looked like i had jaundice so it is, this may not be perfectly accurate either but at least you know it's a little a little more naturalistic so i'm yeah i'm very happy with it um i, I had have to, it uh, you should have a make a trophy out of it or you know put it on a placard <laughs> and hang it on your wall <laughs> the old That's one, yeah. yeah. I think it's still in the years. trash. Yeah, I think it's still right. in the trash. I guess I could do something like that, but you know, I just gave it a the old trash funeral and just <laughs> chucked it. But um, but yeah, it was it was nice to have for that all that time. And the new one is is interesting in a couple ways. Um, it, first of all, the old one I just had a Kleenex and I would just cover it, like because there's so fa- it's so unfancy. There was no cover or anything. <laughs> So I just I would have a Kleenex and I would just cover it and that's all you need. It works great. The new one has a little flippy thing that, you know, that actually yeah. blocks it properly like I can do it now. And look at that. Ah, yep. yeah. Bam, bam, there you go and then you kind of flip it up. Yeah. You can actually there see the go. cover as it goes up. Mm-hmm. Uh yeah. <laughs> 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 right, exactly. So, it's the great. the lens is different, um, and I and I have not figured out if there's a way to zoom it or not. Uh, I think maybe there's not. I'm okay with it isn't isn't because the old one didn't either, and I don't really care. Um, but because the lens is actually different, it's actually showing much more of the room than I'm used to, which is yeah. not the end of the world, but. Like, I know my wife doesn't really want to be on camera, so she, you know, the fact that the door is actually showing is something of an issue. Uh, so what I think I'm going to end up doing is buying a stand, because right now I'm ha- I have it as far forward as I can uh, on the little thing that, that my monitor is on. It can't come any more f- forward physically at the moment uh, without messing up my uh, monitors. So, and obviously I'm not going to do that. So I'm, I, I'm going to buy a little stand cause I have a bunch of those little grab stands that, you know, kind of hold mm-hmm. on to those things and that should work fine. I haven't bought it yet, so it'll probably be a little while before it comes, but then I, it, it'll be where I'm, where I'm used to, where it'll only show, you know, my face, uh, you know, down to, about, you know, down to about sort of like, you know, armpit level, mm-hmm. um, you know, and I'm I'm happy with the mic showing. That always feels good, and it I'm okay right. with the uh, poster because that's you know that's a Swoop Tour mm-hmm. poster, and I'm perfectly cool about that yeah. showing all the time. In OBS, you can zoom it in if you want. I will try that. Yeah, I might I might try that. I I did look for it. Uh, I must have missed it or something though. I was lo- I think I was looking at the generic set it properties, and I think it's some yeah. it's probably somewhere else. It's I can try the, that. The camera settings. Yeah, so that might work really well, and then. That may or may not work for the Discord itself. Who knows with Discord? We'll see. <laughs> anyway, enough about the webcam. Uh, but so rip old webcam and in with the new webcam. Uh, since the last show, I actually made a, a Psylocke cosplay character. Uh, had a lot of fun with it, actually. Inquisitor story, um, but with Sentinel abilities. So she was, you know, the, Mara- she was the equivalent of Marauder, you know, the dual wield, uh, you know, and all that sort of stuff. And a pretty reasonable cosplay, I, I, uh, pretty pretty close in some ways, and liked it a lot. Actually, it was a lot of fun to play and and see the differences and stuff like that. Uh, got her up to seventy three, just past Zaya. So also got the last you know choice on the tree, and then there's one more buff at seventy eight. But mm-hmm. whatever. Uh, and did a fair bit of PvP on her. I found that the PvP just wasn't feeling great for me. Like it's it's good burst damage. Um, very poor control because you have one slow and then at this mm-hmm. level 73 you can choose a slow that'll give you a little bit more slowing ability but that's it right. if you take the stun then you lose out on a, another ability that's equally or I, I found more important mm-hmm. um, so very poor control uh, the, con- the defensive cooldowns are pretty weak you have the vanish and it's pretty short cooldown but then you have no way of getting your health back unless you can get out of combat right you have like a 20% damage um, re- reduction that's up quite a bit of the time. In fact, it can be up almost all the time if you, you know, do certain things with your with your choices and so on. But since you have medium armor and no other defensive cooldowns, really, you know, mm-hmm. the 20% defensive uh, or damage reduction isn't that great. Uh, then you have the other defensive cooldown, generic one that sort of everyone gets. Um, that's like on a two and a half minute cooldown. 
and that's, that's it. Long. That's really it. It's you get nothing else, and it just yeah, I'm, it's just not feeling good. The other the other issue for me is in PvP, especially when things are going crazy and you're just you know and everything is just absolutely nuts. I have a real hard time keeping my focus up because I need you know unlike most abilities where you start out with a bar and you right. work it down and then there's ways to get it up and it also goes up naturally over time no naturally going up over time you have to you have to use the abilities to, f- to force it up and it just i found too many times like i want to use an ability and i spam it a couple of times and it's like oh i need more you know i need more force it's just it mm-hmm. happens all the time uh especially in pvp and pve no problem you know i'm able to work in figure out rotations and blah 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 and pvp mm-hmm. that does not happen because you know you have to adjust things too quickly um so i don't think it's going to be the pvp spec for me i think actually this week i'm going to be doing some 80 pvp on my mains and try out those specs so specifically mm-hmm. that would be uh, lethality operative or uh whatever it's called on the scoundrel side uh right uh, ruffian i think and um and then the uh, the tank, which is uh, like the the power tech uh, slash vanguard tank, because hmm. um, I've got the gear. We're already level eighty, and I'm really used to those specs. So right. we, I'd probably start with the lethality, just because I've been mostly using that one for like dailies and stuff, so I can stealth pass everything I want to stealth pass. <laughs> <laughs> so we'd probably start with that, and then I'd probably like do some dailies on my tank uh, spec, just to kind of like remember everything, and then probably try some pvp on that we'll, we'll work on that uh uh yeah i would say probably this tanking. week and i'm also I, and I did i went through like every you know every like class and kind of thought about like which other ones i should really mm-hmm. try and i think basically for me all of the knight the juggernaut and the marauder versions you know and the, and the jedi versions of course uh mirrored just the the thing where you have to build up the rage or you have to build up the focus i just don't like that as a thing you in felt PvP. like that for, for a me, long time too. yeah exactly i've hardly ever had any sort of main that was sort of in that spec uh in in 6.0 i sort of had uh wonder woman you know and she was a she was a guardian uh, tank um and but that was only only in pve like i was hardly doing any pvp in 6.0 right. So, yeah, so it's just not, it just doesn't jive with me very well. Like, I can do it in PvE, but when it gets to PvP, I just, it's one thing I just don't want to have to deal with. So I, I'm looking at all the other specs to sort of see what might be interesting and, and try to do some research and see what people think is, is good or, you know, or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't, you know, I'm not a min-maxer. I don't have to be playing the, you know, the flavor of the week just because. Um, but I want something that's reasonably viable, that I enjoy how it works and so on. So we'll, we'll, we'll figure something out. <laughs> funny thing is that uh, that's my favorite class. Which one? And, oh, uh, Sentinel and Marauder. Right, right. And ev- well, not uh, most of the times when I play it, I think about mm-hmm. you bringing that up for the first time a long, long time ago. Right. And I just think, man, I can't see how he hates this. I'm having <laughs> so much fun. This is the best. So it goes through my head a, yeah, a yeah. lot when I'm playing it. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. Well, there, and there are certain, certain specs that are, you know, probably a little bit more easy in terms of how, like getting the right amount of force or the, or the costs mm-hmm. come down and sort of that sort of thing where you don't run out. Um, but yeah, we'll, we'll figure, I'll figure something out for sure. Um, and I'm having a lot of fun too. Like actually leveling and doing like le- leveling PVP is actually, uh, I've done it on like three characters in a row now, and it's actually been pretty interesting in, in every mm-hmm. case. Uh, it, it's definitely like l- given me an appreciation for it. It's also a nice, nice way to get some extra love, you know, experience while you're leveling and stuff like that. Right. Right. And I'm, um, and I'm, I don't, doesn't look like I'm going to get all the way through, uh, to level 25, you know, on the PVP track for the season, but I'll get a reasonable amount of the way through it. I'll get a few tokens to, to spend if I, if I see something really cool on the PVP vendor and whatever. Mm-hmm. So overall, yeah, it's working out just fine and we'll get, you know, I'll, I'll get better as time goes on, and once I figure out what I maybe am happy with at at, at end game. Uh, but yeah, uh, let's see. So, duh, 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 duh. 
Right. And then I have a little bit of news about the test server issue, which I'll talk about the mind trap. But first, let's get, yeah, let's get on to the tip of the week. And we have a couple of tips this week from folks. Uh, The first one is from Alex. And Alex says, hey, UtiniCast team, longtime listener here from Romania, which is really cool. I love that. Uh, First time sending a tip. Maybe someone already mentioned this, but as you know, SOTOR has the mouse droid or turret dailies uh, for some time. And after you finish uh, the mission, your companion disappears and you can't easily summon it back. I found that if you manually dismiss your companion before starting the mission, clicking the terminal and so on, then at the end of the mission, you can summon it back from the companion widget. Keep up the great work. Cool. In other words, in other words, having to go back to the to the pull up the end. I, for me, it's the end key, and I think that's the generic one. Right. Bring up the list and having to click on it. Instead, the companion widget will still be there because he has dismissed the companion before he starts it, and then it'll right. be there. That's pretty cool. Thank yeah, you, Alex. Kitty's, I like that. It's a little, little one of those little things. Kitty always talks about that. She's like, I hated my, and I always forget to get him back, and and then I yep. die. <laughs> <laughs> so she, yeah, she's all uh, she's all over it already. <laughs> all um, right. And let's see. And DL Smoothwolf had the other one. He said, "Happy Loken Teens Day." That's tomorrow, I know. And the Loken for Love event is on Saturday, uh, which I'll be running late to. But my tip of the week for next month is to get all the black, green, and gold dyes to create a Saint Swotor Day outfit. Uh, speaking of which, what companion would be best suited for the task? Treek. She's small, skinny, and very quick when it comes to her size, among other things. So <laughs> have a great Valentine's Day and a great Sa- Saint Patrick's Day next month. DL Smoothwolf. Thanks. Thank you, DL Smoothwolf. Thanks, and yep, and I'm going to follow the, the general rule since we have enough uh, codes for now. I'm not going to choose between them. We'll just uh, send a code to each of them. So if you want, uh, you yep, we're we're still like if like I said, if I get a million codes, you know, I'll have to make a choice. But for now, uh, send your tips to tinicas at gmail.com for the next show for a chance to win a Tonfon M83R Droid Pet Code or an M2B9 Droid Code courtesy of Bioware and also courtesy of Bioware a 450 CC code which is always fun all right that'll bring us to the mind trap and uh let's see so uh we wanted to know because i was having a whole lot of trouble getting into the test server and i you know and we'll talk about that in a sec but so the question was have you tried the 64-bit swotor client on the pts and so we got a pretty good amount of votes 252 and thank you for everyone who retweeted and i noticed that uh, jackie co was one of them so thank you jackie as well uh, we got 252 votes. Uh, no was 82.9% of the people who voted. Tried but couldn't get in. So I did, I, it wasn't just yes or no. I also included tried but couldn't get in. That was 5.6%. And yes, I've tried it is uh, 11.5%. So four out of, you know, over four out of five people uh, was no. And this is, our audience tends towards people who, you know, of course like SOTOR, but have and often have been in the in the game quite a long time so you know pretty good candidates for being in the test server and right. still over 80 percent did have not tried it yet and then you know and the test server for for the 64 bit has been up for weeks and weeks now so mm-hmm. uh, i am however at least at the as of this the time of the voting uh, was tried but couldn't get in 5.6 percent and then the yesers were like i said was 11.5 percent now that's obviously like um even though that's a minority, percentage-wise, that's potentially an issue, obviously, for them, because like, if you have tried but couldn't get in, and then the yeses, and if you just take those people, it's saying that like around a third of the time, people are having a whole hard, heck of a hard time getting into the test yeah. server and to try the 64-bit version, uh, which obviously can't stand. Like, you can't, you can't bring something live if a third of your players aren't going to be able to get in exactly, get yeah. in so i'm sure they're working on it and in fact i know i had i do now know of a workaround so actually Yay! yeah and it's <laughs> it's sort of floating around in the ether and even on the forums a little bit if you if you look hard but jackie was nice enough to send me because i i actually let the support team know and i and i put jackie in uh i cc jackie in and she was nice enough to tell me about this and it worked for me so i am in the test server now i just before the show so i was only in for like five minutes just to see that oh yeah i can actually run around and do blah 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 and you know it's all good 
Anyway, so here's the uh, here's the workaround that worked for me. Doesn't necessarily work for everyone, of course. They're they're gonna they're testing this, and of course, let them know. Like if you say, hey, if you try this uh, workaround and it works, let them know. Or if you try this workaround and it doesn't work, definitely let them know. Uh, go to the Swotor directory, which normally would be something like C program files eighty six and then Electronic Arts, Bioware, Star Wars The Old Republic. You right-click on launcher.exe, select Properties, go to the Compatibility tab, confirm that the compatibility mode box is unchecked, and then do the same for the PTS launcher, which is at Star Wars The Old Republic slash public test slash retail client, and then it's swotor.exe again. Do the same thing, right-click, go to the Compatibility tab, and confirm that the compatibility mode box is unchecked. Again, unchecked for the compatibility mode box. Uh, in my case, the main one, I had to uncheck it. The test one was already unchecked for me, so which is odd because, like, mm. I don't know how that works. But anyway, it once I unchecked the uh, compatibility thing, then I was able to get in. It brought up Witchcraft. the... Yeah, it brought up the... And I had the... the typical issue that everyone was having where you there's a long wait f you hear a little mouse droid <laughs> and then it finally brings up the quote-unquote server list but there was it was there was nothing in it and a lot of people have had that same issue and w again once i did this workaround i was able to get in so there you go <laughs> I love that the mouse droid was there to just hackle you. <laughs> Every time it's like. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. So some people uh, have tried it, you know, because we, we were also asking, like, you know, if you have gotten in, like, what was your what were your impressions or what did you find? So Cal for Today in Tour said jumped in on the and the FPS increase is there in some places. Uh, I think it's worth another round, especially in places that are treeless, to see if the FPS increase on those planets is due to no trees or if there is actual performance increases. Uh, Zamzam said, once there's trees, I'll check it out. <laughs> this was, you know, over a week ago. There have been up upgrades to the PTS, by, by the way. Yeah. In fact, that's why I, um, one of the reasons I let Jackie know about it is because just yesterday there was a version, an update version of the PTS, mm -hmm. and I was still not able to get, you know, the uh, server list to, to populate. So I, I, that's when I actually did the email um, initially to let her know that, yeah, this is still an issue for me. Uh, so Teresa said, this is the extent of my experience, and she, she uh, uh, put some uh, pictures there in the show notes. So, um, yeah, uh, let's see. I was not in long enough to really notice if I if there was any tree issues or anything like that for me because I like I said this was right before the show and I just wanted to yeah. I, I, I confirmed that I was able to run around and actually like jump and you know like like I sent my my companion out to to sell junk and that was about it all I did. <laughs> some places do have trees and some don't. Right. I, right. Runic, I went to Runic to just kind of check it out and see if there was any difference in you know in the, the FPS and they had trees. However, uh, I went to Alderaan, no trees. Okay. Um, Python, no trees. So. <laughs> Does Sorry, it look Zan weird? Man. It must look weird, right? <laughs> it looks really cool, actually. Really? It, cause, Just because you can see further than you normally can? Yeah, you or? can see further, and a lot of the places that you're at, you're they're obscured by trees. Right. And it has been for. 10 right. years and that's part so of when yeah. you get there you kind of get to see the background with you know yeah the background for once right because they do have very pretty right they're out in the distance yeah. yeah it's like this cool illusion of like you know something actually being out there yeah i, like, <laughs> I was like wow this is really pretty what's uh, there's something different but i can't place it <laughs> right right that makes sense uh and several of the people the and and several of the people um or one one person said Nicole May said great performance boost though Mechsha is still garbage. And I mm. haven't had any problems on Mechsha ever, mm -mm. even on the live or on the live server. So that's interesting that maybe some people are. I mean, it is a very like bright place with tons and tons of like you know signs and all kinds of other stuff around. Um, and several people just said no no big difference, which is actually kind of right. the point as I understand it. Like yeah yeah their point is that this is not a you know, it's the it's the same game. It's just sixty four bit, and it's supposed to, mm -hmm. which can help in some things, but it's not supposed to 
actually look any different. This isn't actually supposed to like, you know, this right. isn't supposed to change the game like, like that. This is one of those things that's like this helps them, you know, it, it lets people like you know play it on new, newer right on newer uh, pro uh, systems and so on. So yeah. Also, I heard from some folks in my community that they did some PvP and that hmm. there there wasn't any lag. It was it ran beautifully. Which nice. Sounds really cool. Speaking I can't confirm of... that personally, but that's right from what they were playing. Kitty, do you happen to know this, or maybe someone in the chat will know this? I haven't been able to find the uh, server lag. Like it used to be, um, oh. you know, before the last update with the, with the map and everything, it used to be like right below, kind of attached to the mini map, and there's a little, you know, there's a little bars, you know, and and it usually exactly kind of ignored it because it was just there, and you could hover over it to see the exact number. But uh, it's not there anymore, and I don't know where it is, so. If someone knows where that is, please let me know. I, yeah, it's in your utility bar options in the utility. user interface. Oh, yeah. I have to go to the utility bar options and okay, yeah, and, then and then change it and it stuff like there. that. I'm gonna have to. I might put it back on just because I'm. It's all. It's something I'm always curious about. So, especially since like I sometimes do. Um, like I'm. I'm still doing stuff. I didn't talk about it, but I'm actually on like around level ninety ninety one on all five servers now. <laughs> for galactic for galactic seasons oh <laughs> for galactic seasons holy crap yeah yeah and all you have to do is just do the logins you know get get the two hundred thousand for the weekly do the twenty five thousand every day and then once in a while you know if you, you just since you have the thing the components just do the one that's like get a thousand points of reputation in the thing you do, do a few yeah. simple ones like that and you'll get there it's very very easy I'm having some fun right now just doing some extras just to get there a little bit faster. But I could, I've could, i done the math. I can actually just do it if all I do is log in every day, get the daily, mm -hmm. get that weekly, and then you know maybe one or two more, and I'll be there anyway. So, And so, yeah, I'm getting uh, – like I today I got an, uh, like a assault cannon that I've never gotten on any server nice. before. So I can – what I'll do is I'll make a character that can, you know, that can actually equip it put it on them and then at some point when there's a sale I just boom and it'll be account wide Blink, blink. Yep. and of course I also get stuff that I've already unlocked and then I put those on the GTN on those servers which right. helps their economy yeah. but and then gives me some credits and all of these other servers that I don't really do much on I still have like anywhere between 500 and like 300 million credits <laughs> that's awesome I it's pretty simple. <laughs> I started doing it when you said that you mm -hmm. were trying it out, and it pe I petered out. Yeah, <laughs> like, it ah. takes a little bit of time, you know, because you have just go into every server. And but really, if if all you're doing is the minimum every day, it's for me. It's like you get on, you make sure the the crew skills are going out because one of them, it, when you're at low level, one of the ones that you get uh, points mm -hmm. for is uh, up up. Uh, leveling up your crew skills mm -hmm. so you make sure those are out give a gift uh enough so that they get an influence level mm -hmm. um do a deck right. do a decoration yeah. and then um because Deco i'm doing bands. because i'm on the rishi one i jump on the uh i i take the little taxi and you get the taxi points because you're also low that's all another one that works at low level that's over twenty five thousand. even if you're out even if you're not in a if you even if you're not in a guild if you're in a um, guild, then you often get a, bu a little bit of a bump. But For some reason, the taxi doesn't work for me. It depends on it, your level. If you're at low oh, level, really? it will. Yeah. Okay. There's there's actually different ones for different levels. For example, I really miss okay, it. But at low level, I can't get the nice big juicy. It's like 35, 40,000 for reputation gain. You have to be over level 70 for that. If you're over level 70, you can okay. you get tons just for doing a reputation gain, which would be super easy. But I don't have anyone who's level 70 on these servers. So hmm. yep. I'm going to switch up my game then. Yeah. Yeah. So you, I just make sure I get a little over 25,000 every day. Right. Times seven is close to 200,000. And then if you've done a little over, you know, 25,000 times seven is, you know, 175,000. So you need another 25,000 total which if you're going over usually gets you there, you know, and if you, for some reason you're not, then, well, you know, I guess if nothing else on the last day, you take one of those login bonuses that gives you a hundred thousand instantly. And you just kind of say, okay, well, I don't want to, 
Bop, and we're done. <laughs> right. Anyway. So yeah. And, it, and mm-hmm. opening up rooms in your stronghold. That's that's yes. a good one for me. Especially early on, that's really good because that also increases your uh, the conquest points uh, boost. Mm-hmm. Like you need to get up to 150% anyway. So doing that is, is the way to do it. And it's great because like you do all the logins and when you get the, you know, when you get the missions, you put them on the GTN, get lots of credits so that you can actually uh, afford to do that. Uh, yeah, good stuff. All right. Uh, and I'm not sure if, if you like, if you like the name Kitty or if you find, if someone finds a better one, but we're going to call it Uncovered Holocrons. Okay. Uh, for uh, this yeah. is a, a new segment, uh, an, another occasional segment, a little bit like Cantina Talk, where we're not going to do it every week, but we'll do it occasionally, uh, where we're going to talk about largely forgotten SWOTOR functions, sections, and lore. So like things that are in SWOTOR, but don't get talked about much, even though they're still there. Um, we could also potentially, I guess, talk about things that have like gone by the wayside, but I, mm-hmm. for now, I'd, I'd rather stick with things that are actually still in the yeah. game. So this time we're going to talk about the family tree. The family tree is still in the game. It's been in the game forever. People don't yep. necessarily think about it. And I still think it's a kind of a fun little thing to do once in a while. It is. Uh, so under your legacy window, and it's uh, the Y button by default, and I think it still is under mine. Mm-hmm. It's found as you look under, it's the next section after global unlocks. So there's global un- you know, there's character perks, reputation, global unlocks, and then there's family tree. So you click on family tree. Then it gives you like a list of your characters. You can pull your characters from the legacy into the window, and then you give them connect- connections to your other characters. So you can make them married. You can make them siblings. You can make them child or adopted child. You can make them allies or rivals. Those are the options. And from there, you essentially make a whole tree of relationships of all those kinds. Uh, so the most of them are, are right and left. However, child and adopted child creates a level below the current character. So you you have to kind of start with the, you know, like the, the grandparents of the family that you want to do, you and then make child's un, children under them. And then um, left to right is the allies, rivals, siblings, um, and married. And uh, so you can, because of the way it's kind of set up, you can only have two left-right connections, um, but you can have an apparently unlimited number of children. So I, I cause I kept like try, trying it just to see what happened. I got up to like five and then it kind of went past the sides of the screen. And so I was like, okay, okay well, I don't know what the actual limit is, but you know, you can get at least five and I'm sure you can do more. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, and then you could just kind of end up making a tree. So I put a little, a couple screenshots of what it looks like, you know, what, what, like what it looks like with very basic with just a couple characters married and then the little hover thing because when you when you drag a new character in you drag it over the character you want to connect them to and then it brings up like like this little scroll wheel menu and then you hover and then you can make them an ally or child or whatever and then it drops it and then you can see i added a bunch of children to one character just for fun (laughs) (laughs) so yeah and so that way you know and it's just sort of a it's just sort of a nice little RP thing. Like if you want to have your characters mm-hmm. be married or whatever, and it doesn't matter. Like the fact that like my two characters that are married originally in the, on the family tree um, are on different factions, but that doesn't matter for this. Like they only care that it's your your own characters in your legacy. That's oh, all that cool. matters. Uh, and then yeah, you can make a whole little you know whole little storybook of. Uh, allies and enemies and family members and all that good stuff yeah so yeah it's uh, it's been in the game forever and people don't talk about it much but i'm happy to talk about it here so yeah that's uh, that's that's if someone has an idea for uh an uncovered holocron segment that you'd like like us to talk about let us know i i would appreciate that i have a few other ideas of course as well uh in in mind but uh you know we'll start off with this one and yeah, anything else about the family tree kitty? Like, have you used it before or? Yeah, I used it before. I remember when it first came out, I was mm-hmm. really excited about it. And yeah, I don't know. I, I played with it for, like I said, when it first came out and then just kind of stopped doing anything with it. I think it might be kind of fun, especially, you know, with both of us being altaholics. Mm-hmm. See if you can get all of your characters on there. <laughs> 
<laughs> you're right. You're Can they all be children characters? of one character? Can they all be children of one character? <laughs> <laughs> that might be kind of a fun little uh experiment experiment to try out though. yeah because it like i said it just kept adding them and do, 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 and there's a little arrows so if mm-hmm. if not everything is fitting on the screen what you'll you'll see is that there's little arrows and you can force the family tree to move around so if it's a really big family tree you can actually move around just so you can see it all because unfortunately there's no way to like zoom in and out it's just right. you know it is what it is as far as size goes uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> uh, yeah, I remember um, at one point I had a pretty good family tree, but then unfortunately when uh, there were server mergers, family tree right. is one of the few right. things that really did get kind of, they, those kind of go away uh, during the during the server mergers. I can see why, because mm-hmm. they have name change things, issues, and all kinds of other things. I could see why they just had to drop that. But because of that, I just never went back to it. And so it's been a while since I've really thought about it. And then it's like, you know what? I'll, and I started just messing around with it. And there we go. It's a good one. So, yeah. Uh, I think nice. it's, especially for like our peers or just even if you're not the kind who RPs with other people, but you like to have, you know, RP within your own mind, your own, mm-hmm. you know, like, oh, okay, my trooper, is, you know, is, uh, you know, married to my smuggler or, you know, or whatever. You know, you can absolutely do that. And uh, yeah, allies and enemies and all that good stuff. (laughs) It's a great, it's a great idea. I like this new segment. Yeah, great. All right. Uh, And like I say, if anyone has a better name for it too, that's fine too. But for now, we'll, we'll, (laughs) for now, we'll, uh, we'll stick with the uncovered holocrons. Yes. All right, that'll bring us to the Hollow Feed, which is the new segment. And let's see. So they started with 7.2.1 is coming to the public test server. So uh, that's what they're now uh, updating it to. And I can't wait to actually try it for- properly. Uh, yeah, so uh, Galactic Season 4, A Passage of Peace. So 7.2.1 is going to mark the beginning of the next Galactic Season. Like previous seasons, this one will come with a host of new rewards players can earn and will feature a brand new companion, uh, Amity, for players to learn and traverse, traverse the galaxy with. Pretty cool. Yeah. One new reward we are thrilled to share is that players will be able to use their Galactic Season tokens to purchase a brand new apartment stronghold on the planet Meksha. The Meksha hideout stronghold is similar in size and scale to the seasonal fleet strongholds. So the fleet ones are... Um, not this uh, pretty small but they're not you know they're not tiny that you there yeah. there's definitely plenty of hooks and stuff like that and there's a few rooms and stuff like that like to me it's like I'll, you know like i don't really i love it the thing is like the my main my main thing is like log in have everything you need right there and it'll you know and log out of the stronghold like i very rarely just yeah. wander around these long, large strongholds right so uh so you yeah, know everything within. i'm sure the mech shot one will be plenty big for me uh it actually is one it's i th- i think it's it's really mech has really kind of become like one of the iconic places in swotor yeah. like, it's so unusual and it's so like distinctive it's gorgeous uh yeah, yeah. it's so makes sense that they would do a stronghold i'm very excited to see it and yeah yeah another thing is when you once the summertime happens and we get the the nightlife event it'll be easier to travel to mech Shaw because you don't always have to go to Narshada. Hmm. You can go to Meksha and uh, do some of the events there. Right. So the, yeah, the nightlife a, event. Yeah. Yeah, you'll you know have a another way to travel there and mm-hmm. probably maybe for free, I don't know. I'm not exactly sure how that um, well. Right. Well, right. Well, there actually, we have, we have some stuff to talk about when it comes to that. We'll get to that soon. Um, 7.2.1 also talks about, uh, PVP season two, as a reminder, our inaugural PVP season, the one that's active now live, uh, season post revamp will run until the end of February. Okay. So now we know it's like, an, it okay. goes two weeks from today. So we have two, two more weeks. Um, two there weeks, you go. Baby. Players can then look forward to season two, starting with the launch of 7.2.1, which I, you know, they're not exactly giving the exact date yet, which makes sense. They're still, it's still on the test server, uh, where they can earn all, all new rewards. Similar to Galactic Seasons, stay tuned in the coming weeks as we begin to v- reveal what these new rewards will be. 
We've been actively monitoring your feedback on PvP following our revamp in 7.2 and we're exploring a variety of changes. Uh, the first among these are some changes to attacker and defender medals, which we are testing uh, starting with the Alderaan War Zone on the PTS. Uh, more, that, more on that in the PTS section below. Yes, and I have been finding that absolutely. I've been having all kinds of issues getting, especially the metal ones for the weekly uh, on the PvP track uh, for Season 1. Absolutely having a hard time getting eight medals, especially on characters like I, the one I was leveling this time, you know, Psylocke, which was uh, a Sentinel, all damage, no, you know, no heals, no uh, protection. Uh, very, very difficult getting eight medals uh, on that one. Um, yeah, I've heard a lot of people saying that too. Right, and they know about it. They're, they're exactly why they're talking yep. about it. Combating inflation, as many long player time players will like you recognize. Yes, the credit economy in SOTOR has had some pretty substantial inflation over the years. Yes, 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 indeed. <laughs> this makes it challenging for players to engage in our trade economy, especially new players. Uh, one of our goals this year is to begin correcting some of our economic inflation. We have a couple of initiatives, which will begin in 7.2.1 and expect more changes in future releases throughout the year. More details in the PTS section below. I must say... Um, one thing I'm kind of finding, not necessarily for the most expensive items, but for like more like the bronze and silver items, because a lot of people are getting through the galactic seasons and are getting a lot of things to open, mm -hmm. you know, and anytime there's one that you've already unlocked, well, what are you going to do with it? Well, most people are going to put it on the on this GTN, you know, right. um, because of that, there's more. You know, there's much more on the GTN, and because of that, the prices have started to come down. Like, I've noticed that, like, some of the bronze armor sets, like, which for a while were kind of creeping up, and, like, even a, a very simple bronze bronze armor set were sometimes multiple million, you know, credits, like 5 million, 10 million credits. I'm seeing now a lot of the uh, bronze armor sets are now below a million, or they're a million and a half, or whatever. And so they're, I think, I think the, Galact the way they've changed Galactic Season 3 is actually been at least in this small area a bit of a help so interesting but obviously more needs to be done there are so many credits out there so. yes and 64-bit testing 7.2.1 will also mark the release of our 64-bit client when it goes live is what they what they mean and although we've been testing this on pts since december of last year we encourage players to continue logging in and letting us know of any issues they experience we encourage, we encourage players to log into the PTS to report any issues they may experience. It's vital to gather as much information as possible during this testing phase as there are thousands of permutations of processor, memory, graphics cards, and etc. that exist for yeah. PC gaming. Knowing how certain configurations perform with the game is crucial. Please play as you normally would, and if there's anything strange happening, let us know about it. So that's that's pretty cool. I'm going to definitely test this out on, on stream because I do everything on stream that I can. Right. And uh, yeah, PTS, now that uh, players know what to expect in game update 7.2.1, what will we be able for testing? So in the Alderaan War Zone, players will now earn attacker and defender points when defeating enemies near objectives. So that's pretty cool. Um, check out our uh, more details in our feedback thread here. 7.2.1's PTS is our new 64-bit client, so please log in and let us know of any issues you experience with your natural play. Uh, we are making some changes to credit costs to account for inflation. Full details in the feedback thread here. We'll talk about that in a minute. Devs will also be participating in PvP matches, and they did so uh, last Friday. <laughs> uh, during this phase of PTS, we'll be granting an Opal Voltilla mount to players who complete the following tasks, log on to the PTS, and complete a Warzone match. Now, that doesn't seem to be related to the uh, you know, to the dev PvP one. The J this just seems to be in general. Uh, so it's kind of like how in, in um, previous years they've done certain rewards, like certain titles, yeah. the Kaizaiken log mount, stuff like that. Um, for people to help out, you know, just to get people that more people on the PTS. It's a good idea. And yeah. And obviously the Opal, Opal Volt amount is still quite rare, um, but, you know, it's getting a little more common. You know, people have slowly yeah. been able to get the codes, but uh, it's not the easiest one to get. And if you want, you want to get it, uh, log on to PTS, complete a Warzone match. Now, obviously it's a little tricky to the complete a Warzone match it's is not necessarily going to happen. Yeah, that one, <laughs> that part is the tricky bit. Yeah. Uh, the reward will be distributed with the launch of Game Update 7.2.1. Yeah, it's a great, and it's a great mount. It is a really cool mount. Yeah, 
Uh, let's see. They did uh, also, well, before we get onto some of that other stuff, they, they did put up like what the last two weeks of the Galactic Season 3 uh, things that you need to do are, you know, earn 25,000 conquest points. That's every day, but, uh, you know, which ones they are. So we have the turn in uh, game analysis modules to get a thousand reputation missions as a trooper or agent. That's what that's this week. I don't want to go through them all. It always takes too, too long to do it. It's on yeah, swotor.com, but it's week. also in our show notes uh, for episode 458. If you, if you want to see it there. And, uh, yeah, so, and some people, I'm sure some people would like to, you know, ahead of time, Mm -hmm. but anyway, all right. So, so let's see. So from Jackie Co, this is the cost changes on the PTS, um, to reiterate players will be able to see the following adjustments. This is on the PTS and eventually will go live. Although obviously this, you know, potentially with changes once they've, uh, and and adjustments. Mm-hmm. Quick travel now has a credit cost associated with a minimum cost of 100 credits and a maximum cost of 5,000. The cost to travel is dependent on the distance traveled. I'm not sure exactly how they're going to do that, but interesting. Um, obviously, no one's going to be like happy about this. Like no no one's happy to be no. paying for something that they were not paying for before. But this is you know this is you know this is just try to take care of the inflation in the game priority transport terminal uh, now costs uh, the original planet travel cost to transfer between daily areas oh interesting so yeah so i guess that's if you go from like the regular part of bell to the to the daily area on bell or like black mm-hmm. hole on corellia stuff like that i suppose it's not super common but i mean i guess it is something that does happen uh, travel to strongholds now costs the original travel travel planet travel cost to tra- travel transfer between planets. Sorry, I didn't say that, that very well. Uh, yes, and there's a little there's a he talks. Uh, Eric has something to say about that later, so kind of put a pin in that. Repair cost formulas have been adjusted across the entirety of the game so that repair costs increase in relation to item level, which they always have, but I guess you know they're they're readjusting it. Uh, durability of equipment should now be lost at a lower rate on death, but a slightly higher lit rate in normal gameplay. So mm. there you go. Yeah, and Sorry Saber says that this could really hurt really new players and poor players in the game. Um, I actually, yeah, I agree, and I think um, hopefully they will recognize that, like especially like starter planets and um, stuff like that. It really needs to be super low or even zero cost for some of these things like i totally get it like if you're level 80 you're not going to notice if you're quick traveling and it takes a few thousand credits out of your account because you know you've got 500 million credits in your account it's like you're not even going to notice and it really won't matter but it'll still slow slightly help over time Um, but yeah but if you're like it if you're like it like level one and then it's like oh you need to quick travel but now you can't because you can't afford it but obviously that's you know that's gonna be an issue yeah but you can always just taxi true if you can get to the taxi but the taxis cost too though yeah at least most of them do some of them are free uh, dur- uh let's see so durability equipment should be lost at a lower rate on death but a slightly higher rate in normal gameplay so i guess that will help if you're doing operations and dying because of operations but if you're just grinding stuff out, it's going to be a little bit higher than that way you're used to. Interesting. Uh, let's see. So the questions that they want to have feedback on are, do you find yourself having to repair more or less often? When you do repair, does the cost increase seem significant or fair? Uh, and adjustments for, to travel, do the quick travel costs seem fair? Do, the, do you think it will affect your usage of quick travel? Are there travel costs that you currently find to be too small or or too little or too much? Are there methods of travel that have no cost that you would expect to have a cost? Uh, There you go. So uh, let's see. And also, so those are the questions that they want to ask about. So there we go. We'll we'll talk about a little bit more here in a sec when we when we get to the bit about uh, Eric Musco kind of coming in and talking a little bit more about it. they also had a little bit of update on the Alderaan uh, medals things. So uh, defender points per tick have also been going up from 500 to 700 points per tick. In other words, you're going to get those medals faster for defend for helping defend. Mm-hmm. Uh, turret control zones have been increased. Turret control zone is just basically the area that you get 
credit for if you're around when it when it changes hands or or now when you kill when someone dies and you help kill someone inside that zone that will also that's also a larger area now it's a little hard to know exactly what those sizes are because there's not really a visual indication in the game as far as i know right i've never found one on a map or visually in the you know on the ground in the game itself Uh, it's just sort of i think it's sort of like it's kind of what you would expect. Like it's, you know, it's like if you're on Alderaan and you're sort of fighting in that middle area around the, the around the thing, you should expect to be in that zone, and you are right now. Now, how much bigger that zone is, is it's me a little hard to know, but um, we'll see. Maybe maybe they'll actually add a little, you know, indication on the map or on, you know, or even on the ground or something. Who knows? Um, they haven't said that that, that they were going to do that though. Uh, when the control with when within the control zones of a turret controlled by the opposing team, you'll receive 500 attacker points for every player you defeat. And the same thing if for uh, if you're within a control, turret controlled by your team, you get 500 defender points when you defeat a player. So there you go. So that's going to be another way to get medals, and that should definitely help. Especially, and it's nice that this is nothing to do with healing, nothing to do with defense. Like the, yeah, if you're a straight yeah. damage player, which is where the it, what I've found the most most of the issues are this is going to help them directly like very very directly uh, these players should help uh, reach higher defender and attacker point medals as well as reward the team for winning fights as an objective uh, yeah and I appreciate that because like I understand like if you're getting just swarmed like I never got eight, me- eight I'm never getting eight medals as a straight damage character I'm never mm-hmm. getting eight medals when we lose a match like I can never expect that to happen um, which is unfortunate because you need more eight medal ones than you actually need wins for some of these things. So they're kind of expecting that you're sometimes going to get eight medals even though you're not getting a win. That almost never happens as a as a straight damage person uh, at at the way, but uh, at the way it is now. But maybe this will this should be able to help a lot on that. Uh, you know, so you yeah. can at least at least if it's close, you can at least uh, expect to sometimes get eight medals. Um, you know, when you when you don't win. Uh, let's see. Why are these changes coming only to the Alderaan map? We chose the Alderaan's Warzone for two reasons. The first being it can set a good baseline for the other control point modes like, like Navaric Coast and Yavin Ruins. And secondly, it's one of the more popular maps. It's also important to note we intend rolling out these changes to various maps over time as each map is constructed and built differently. Our philosophy behind these changes and the middle system as a whole is to encourage players to play the objective and play to win in order to improve quality of matches for their teammates and progress progress in their own individual PvP reward track. With that said, medals are designed to recognize the accomplishments of, uh, of tasks a player com- team completes. This is to encourage players to not only put in their best effort forward, but also to reward the team accomplishing those tax- tasks with improved progress on their PvP reward track. Yeah, the, the really frustrating one is when you actually win and you were doing everything you could the whole time and you still don't get eight medals. Like, yeah. that is really frustrating. And I hope that, hopefully that will essentially go away with this. It'll be interesting to see if that, uh, if that is actually happens. Happens all the time when I was leveling my DPS character. Like I remember you talking about Yeah, because I, like, I would get the wins and I would still be at like one or mm-hmm. two out of four <laughs> towards the weekly for the eight medal ones. It's like, <laughs> it depends on which war zone too like you know anyway uh, very enough about that about yeah that. yeah it's a bit, it's a it's a definitely a sore point for me for sure oh yeah it would be for me too i mean <laughs> i'm doing everything right but i'm not getting the right thing. exactly yeah exactly like right and like there's certain uh because she's heavy damage um i was actually getting the most damage winning or losing on you know mm-hmm. I actually had one war zone where I got the most damage. We lost. I had one medal. One. <laughs> one medal. I had the most damage, which means I was fighting the whole time. Right. One medal. And it was a loss. So, you know, anyway. not to, That's enough of that. <laughs> anyway, they're going to be adjusting more of the PvP maps uh, to help alleviate the difficulty of receiving medals, especially uh, when succeeding in a war zone. Uh, and these changes will roll out in batches as they change different war zones. So they're starting with Alderaan, which is fine. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. They, I wanted to address what a turret zone is. This is essentially the radius in which you, you gain go. defender points when standing near uh, and uh, an objective for 30 seconds. The radius also accounts for gaining attacker and defender points on player kills. 
This allows for high, highly mobile fights that can stray further away from the node to still count towards each player's objective score who is within the radius and contributing to the fight. Cool. That is nice. The second thing I wanted to address is still no indication that it's going to be visually changed, but still, you know, it's already a pretty good distance anyway, I think, from, I, from what I've noticed in getting defenders medals and, you know, while fighting and stuff like that. Second thing I wanted to address is the topic of stalemates. Currently, if a node is unable to be captured by either team due to a stalemate, then neither t- team will gain objective points, which is true because, like, you could get a kill, but if it's still a neutral zone, it's not an a- attacker or a defender node. If this situation situation happens, players should be rotating to other points or attempting to take other objectives on the map. If a team is unable to retake an objective after the other side has taken it, then they will naturally struggle to get objective points. This is because medals are designed to reward the t- team accomplishing tasks in the war zone, which also encourages players to put their best f- uh, effort towards any in any given match. Um, okay, which unfortunately doesn't really address the, <laughs> the idea of because there are nodes that just don't get captured for a long yeah, time a middle of alderaan like if both teams are sending their best players there and you know whatever it can be really hard to take that that puppy yeah. uh last so i'm not sure if that's really addressing that a whole lot uh or the way they th- that he thinks it is but whatever anyway um i understand though you know the idea is okay then go take other things and then come back and you know whatever but you don't want to lose them <laughs> you don't want to lose mid either that sucks Last, I want to address changes in regards to other maps. And the answer is yes, we'll be making adjustments to the other war zone in batches since they're all constructed differently and we want to make sure we have a solid amount of time to test the changes made on the various maps. A good example would be uh, Alderaan and Denova, very similar, similar in concept but have rule differences between them that could influence how we approach changes to that map. With that in mind, we want to uh, make sure we give our team the ability to iterate on proposed changes. Changes to other war zones will be rolling out in future releases. In other words, they're not they're not going for anything other than Alderaan in seven seven two one. Uh, and uh, yeah, all right. And Kitty needed a moment, so we'll just take a moment. I think he can still hear me though. Hopefully, so I think I think we'll kind of keep going here. Uh, so. From Eric Musco, additional information about the credit sinks on the PTS. Hey folks, first of all, thank you for the feedback here and uh, in the thread, and especially for those players who have jumped on the PTS and played around with the changes. There's some great points of feedback and questions in the thread. I wanted to respond to some of the themes we're seeing. First of all, these changes are not enough, in other words, to combat inflation. You are correct, and we know that but it is a starting point. It's very important that we make these changes slowly and that we monitor their impacts closely. There are some excellent suggestions in this thread for further changes that are already in the works. As we said up front, you should expect to see changes that focus on the economy throughout the next few updates. So there you go. Uh, That's that's one important thing is that these are not the end of the fighting uh, inflation or the changes to credit costs. This is just the start just we, the beginning exactly we want to start we want to start small and in targeted ways more changes are coming in future updates let me give you some specifics based on suggestions i'm seeing in the thread we know that players uh, exchanging high value items will often change trade outside of the gtn either because of of the sale cap which is 1 billion credits or to avoid getting taxed at all on the transaction mm-hmm. This is likely the place you'll see a number of changes coming after 7.2.1 to stop that loophole and to start properly taxing high-value trades. Interesting. So maybe trades in themselves will have uh, costs as well. I'm not sure if it would be the same. We, he doesn't give any details, and I could be I could be actually wrong in saying that, but he certainly makes it sound like that. Yeah, it does. I don't know how they do that, though. Right. (laughs) Uh, You're not hurting the rich. Well, we're not trying to, not specifically. Inflation in its simplest form is about the amount of credits entering the economy against the amount coming out of it. Over time, we've shot ourselves in the foot a bit as we've removed or minimized uh, most regular credit sinks, removing, for example, training costs, etc. The goal of these changes is to introduce passive, small credit removal to the game. This way we have credit removal a bit more in line with our credit generation. Removing uh, sing- singular batches of credits from a subset of players would not lower credit inflation, although it is an important component of it, and it could not re- replace this type of passive removal. I'm sure there's arguments for and against that, but I guess what they're saying is that they want the whole system as a whole to make sense in terms of like 
how many credits are coming in from you know people turning in missions and doing everything else versus right. what's coming out based on this that and the other uh, we need credit syncs. We hear you. It would, be, it would be great to have some more. Spend a ton of credits to get something specific. But one consideration is that many of the suggestions being made are one-time purchases, which do not continually reduce credits. As we have many systems that continually introduce credits, we have we need more things that reduce credits often and not just on a one-time basis. In other words, they could make a couple of really cool mounts or armor sets or whatever that would be available mm-hmm. from vendors for a few billion, a couple billion credits, and that'd be great. A couple, some people would buy them. A few billion credits would be taken away every time. But does that really affect the? You know, that has right. sort of marginal effects uh, on the economy as the a whole. Time. And it is very one time. Like, you know, the, once someone who can afford a couple billion credits for something sends it, they're presumably already building it up. You know, I actually like. I'm not the greatest on the GTN or anything like that. And I have probably 5 billion credits total on my, you know, Mm -hmm. on the main server on Satil Sean. I have more than 1 billion on uh, Starforge and I hardly play there at all. (laughs) Yeah. And like I said, I'm I'm just doing Galactic Season stuff on the other three servers and I have at least Mm -hmm. one server with like 200 million credits. So, yeah. So there's a lot of credits out there. There's a lot of credit. Anyway, uh, to help balances, we've been uh, adding credit syncs over the past year or so. Most prom- pr- prominently would be the catch-up mechanic in uh, Galactic and PvP seasons. Uh, the credit costs in those catch-ups can become quite substantial. Actually, I might look into the PvP season one. I kind of forgot that there's a catch-up mechanic on that. I did too that. until the other day, and I love it. <laughs> I, might have to, I might have to do that just so that way when I do the last couple weeks here, I'm actually working towards the very end of the season as opposed to like... Good idea. Yeah, because if it works the way... I haven't checked, but the way the Galactic Seasons works, you can't get to the end with just credits. You have to no. you know, earn the rest of it or, or cartel coin it. Mm-hmm. So if I do the PvP seasons with credits, I can do that right away and then you know actually work towards the rest of the season. That's good a good... Idea. I'll have to remember to do that. Can you bring, could you bring back amplifiers? That was actually a really fun mechanic for me. Like, and I wasted tons of credits trying to get the right amplifiers on, oh, on my man, I forgot gear. about that. Yeah. Tons of credits. Um, I, in fact, the one thing they never, they never changed it. I suggested it multiple times to him, but I always thought low levels amplifiers should be like really, really cheap or almost free or even free at very low levels, like mm-hmm. just to get people to try them. At, right. at the high end, like the price that they were was where we got very expensive for level oh. 75 gear because uh, that was the maximum at the time. Very brutal, but kind of fair too. Like, it, you know, and then it reset, you know, so you, if you were had a little bit of patience, you could wait for it to for, wait for the weekly reset and then you could try again or whatever, yeah. you know, or, you, oh, I got, I got another, you know, I got another end level, you know, ampl- you know, piece of the same kind. Let's just try this amplifier, you know, that sort of thing. Oh. Anyway, um, yeah, but shorter in shorter, no, they can't bring back amplifiers. Our items are not built to have amplifiers on them since we removed the system. However, the sentiment of the question is solid and in alignment with what I said earlier. This is another example of what we have removed as a credit sink. Uh, the stronghold change particularly sucks. <laughs> Let's talk about this one and our goal. As we're introducing a variety of passive costs to travel, players will inevitably look for a way to subvert it, even if it is a small cost. One way players could do this is to use Stronghold Travel to a planet and then exit area, which I do all the time. Especially too. when I'm leveling someone and they happen to be going to Nar Shaddaa, yep. because mm-hmm. Nar Shaddaa sucks, uh, you exit your ship and you can't, you have to mount up and you go all the way out, not yeah. even to the spaceport proper, but all the way out to the taxi area mm-hmm. to, before you can do anything. I always use a Stronghold, I exit to Nar Shaddaa, and then you're right on the promenade and you can just do stuff right away. Yeah, I use the heroic tool. Uh, the weekly quick travel all the time on mm. that planet. Yeah. Uh, and then exit area. Our concern here isn't, I wonder if they're going to add, add a cost for that, actually. Maybe. Our concern here isn't actually for traveling to the stronghold. It would be the player using then, uh, to trying to use it as a stepping stone onto the planet itself. So in other words, um, Right. With that said, we hear your sentiment on this fun feeling, especially punitive, paying to travel to something you paid for. So here's what we're going to try to change it to. We will not charge you to travel to your stronghold. Instead, we would simply apply a travel cost to using exit area. 
Now, this is not how it's implemented currently on the PTS, he means. So it will require a bit of time to switch. If we can't make this time, uh, this change in time for launch, we'll uh, likely do no changes for Stronghold Travel in 7.2.1 and implement, implement the proposed credit cost as noted in the above future. Um, and so in other words, what he's saying is like, uh, right now on the PTS, you have to have to pay to get to your stronghold. That's not what they really want though. They want is for like, if you're, if you use the stronghold to actually end up in a different area that you started from, Mm -hmm. as opposed to like return. So you shouldn't that what they're hoping to make it is so that if you just return to the area where you were, that shouldn't involve a cost. But if you go to the stronghold and then you end up in a new planet, you know, then then yes, they they want that to in, involve some sort of cost. Um, but it's and, and then like you said, it's not how it is on the PTS right now. All right. Um, let's see. So if you're still having issues getting into the PTS, uh, as you know, and we've talked about this already in this show, uh, and there's already a workaround and uh, to to try. But if you're still having issues, send us an email to support at swotor.com and the subject line includes 7.2.1 PTS, empty server list. Uh, and then they ask for certain um, host.developer.log files and the client logs in the install directory. And if possible, uh, indicate where you're expen- experiencing this on the launcher. So if it's a launcher, Steam, both, if one's working, one's not, that sort of thing, and to include your account name. So, and I, in fact, did that. Um, so yeah, so hopefully the workaround will work for some people or maybe a lot of people, I don't know, but it did work for me, or at least it seemed to. I was able to get in once, which I never have been before. Finally. So yeah, I'm really excited to, to try that some more. Uh, yeah. So and anything else that for, co- for costs that you can think of off the top of your head, Kitty? No, not that I can think of. Um, this information will be available on our show notes Mm -hmm. if you are looking to try it out so yeah yeah i would say like for me um in in terms of like getting some of the bigger credit ones out of the way i would say like if they could increase the the gtn so it's so you can actually sell things for more than a a billion credits i think that would be smart especially Mm -hmm. if like you have the normal what I forget where the exact percentage is nowadays. I think it's eight percent or something like that. Mm-hmm. If the same, it was the same eight percent. If it's you know for up to one billion, and then for amounts over a billion, it changed and went higher. Like really try to slurp some credits out at that point, you know, because if, if you know if you can right. sell something for two billion and it, it ends up costing you twelve percent instead of eight percent, you know that helps a lot in terms of the amount of credits that go out. But anyway, that was just, it's an idea and I've already told them about it. So I'm, but I, I'm actually really, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm surprised that they don't have stronghold upkeeps. Every other mm. MMO I've ever played, any kind of uh, hmm. player housing, you always had to pay player upkeep. Huh. So it would be every month you, you had to pay to make sure that your humble abode. Okay up above board and so if, if not then you either couldn't you can't travel to it or yeah um, like you, and maybe it doesn't count towards your conquest bonus stuff like that i'm not sure exactly how i think the conquest bonus would be really that would be an interesting kind of uh, uh penalty for not paying it but i'm surprised they didn't bring it up right well, yeah. maybe they have it in, you know, in the future. They did say they're mm-hmm. going to be trying other things. You know, there's going to be extra ones added uh, later on. So maybe that is yeah. in the works. Um, that makes yeah. sense. And I, I suppose if you're like, if you say, you, you know, if it's if it's in other MMOs, we know that the devs play other MMOs on purpose so they can, you know, get ideas of like what's what's going on in the MMO universe and and, you know, ideas that might work uh, within SWOTOR. So they presumably yeah. have come across that at some point. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it makes sense uh, though that if you if you can't pay for it, then at that point you wouldn't be able to travel to it, you know, until you start paying the upkeep cost for yeah. it again. Mikey um, says uh, in Sword yeah. you can take away conquest bonus or relock mm-hmm. rooms. <laughs> I suppose, yeah, it that might get a little complicated if you're doing it on a room by room basis. I imagine just turning off the ability to go to the main, you know, to the stronghold at all right. yeah. would probably be 
as far as they'd want to take it, but I guess they could do a, a room by room, uh, you know, upkeep that as well. Like but that complicated. sounds complicated at that point. They could do it, yeah. but it would be complicated. Think, <laughs> like, I don't know how many strongholds I have. Hmm. That would be potentially. I have, I have more than I need, but yeah, I love them. Hmm. I still love them, even though you know I don't always yeah. use them or anything. But it, it's a lot of fun. Yeah. Uh, all right. Yeah, I'm like there. I can't wait to see the Mech Shaw one. I mean, it's such a cool, oh, me cool too. area. I, I've wanted Mech Shaw ever since Mech Shaw came out. Mm -hmm. I think everybody has. Yeah. But, yeah. All right. And then, uh, yeah, I'm sure you've watched the, the latest Bad Batch. There'll be another, yeah. you know, this is the wrong time of week to be talking about it because, you know, the new one always comes out on Wednesday. So, right, right. Uh, but yeah, the, the, we got to see Kashyyyk, which is cool. You don't get yeah. to see a lot of Kashyyyk, uh, you know, in, in modern star star wars there's a little bit in episode you know here and there but it was fun to see it it's really fun i th and i i came to the conclusion the other day that the reason one of the reasons that i'm enjoying playing trooper mm -hmm. so much this time around is because of the bad batch oh you know, yeah that makes sense it, it gets me all fired up and then wednesday <laughs> when i start streaming I'm like come on baby <laughs> you're gonna try to are you gonna thinking of cosplaying one of them like Wrecker no, or something? That might be kind of fun. It could be fun, yeah. I didn't even think about that, but that might be kind of fun to do. Yeah, do a Wrecker, trooper. You, know, you could do a body type three. Right. I would probably do him as a um, bounty hunter power tech, body size three, because yeah. that way he has the punch. He, you know, you'd have the punch oh, ability yeah, and yeah, yeah, instead yeah, of stock instead of stock strike, you'd have the, the, the straight up punch. <laughs> <laughs> That punch is so fun. I love the noise it makes. Oh my god, so much fun! <laughs> and the animation where you kind of go up in the air and stuff. Oh, yeah. Ba dong! <laughs> we used to call it super punch. Um, yeah, yeah. Well, that's actually I, I've made a couple of I my the very first time I made a She Hulk character, I did it as a, a power tech because simply because of the punch ability. <laughs> I just every time I think about punch, I think about you just slogging through. Oh, it's Shrek, um, yeah. Shrek. <laughs> you know, he went through and, and played it only punching yes. as much as he could. Yep. How long did it take you to get through the story? Forever. And I did all of Kalfi, all of Kotet, Iocath, <laughs> the Traitors Trilogy, Osis. Oh my God. It was in the 6.0 era, so we had to go all the way through Corellia at the time. We didn't have the post Corellia stuff. We didn't have like the, um, right. you know, like the, the Mandalorian flashpoints and stuff like that. But um, but we had we was all the way through Corellia. And it took forever. It's a couple yeah, of pretty I'm... tough fights, you know, if you're doing it. Yeah. And remember, it was not only you know I had to strip off the main hand weapon, but I I was. Uh, I was like a power tech or as, or as like a guardian. Yeah, I was a, no, he, yeah, that's right. He was a, a Jedi, like a guardian. So he had an, he had a, a secondary hand cause it, you know, there's no weapon there. And then I could not use any ability that required a, a main, a main hand weapon. So I had a few utility stuff like defensive cooldowns that I could use that. And I had no companion. I had to put my companion on passive the whole time. So it was just punching was the only damage I could do. And then I had like a couple of utilities to like keep me alive. It was, it was I something. I remember raiding you and just being like, all right, you guys, here <laughs> is the man that is torturing himself. Yeah. But you were having fun. Yeah. It was a ton of fun. In MMO, so so much fun. more story since then. I mean, that you got all that stuff post 6.0. Now you have 7.0 with Manon and stuff like that. But you yeah. also have all of Runic, which is Runic is pretty long. Oh. Yeah. It'd be, uh, it would take a long time. Can you imagine I'm, playing that last fight with uh, um, the three different versions of the Emperor? <laughs> that, that would take you forever. It might. Go. It might. The, the good news is like there's a lot of help you get from all the other NPCs that are helping you in that fight. Yeah. So you'd probably survive even you'd with survive, but... even with even with Satil Shan on passive. Uh, it'd be nasty. Oh, but uh, you probably could survive. Yeah, it was crazy. <laughs> I might have to try it again sometime. It's been you know a while. That was in the six point early six point oh uh, era, so yeah. it's been a while. I have to come up with another another character I'd want to do, you know, put, do nothing but punching on. 
I actually, I remember trying, like, before I did Shrek, I had to decide, like, because I, I didn't know exactly what abilities would be available and what wouldn't if you strip off the right. main hand weapon. Because for the most part, they just kind of all go away. And some, even some yeah. weird ones that you think you wouldn't need do go away. Like, mm-hmm. even even on the spec that I chose. But on other ones, when I tried it, it's like, without the main hand weapon, oh, you have, like, nothing. Like, I can't do anything on this spec. Mm-hmm. So it's like, okay, well, I can't do this one. <laughs> That's why I chose... Actually, the main reason I chose the um, the Guardian was simply because I could keep the uh the one big healing one where it's like you know when you're taking damage you get a big heal back and mm-hmm. it basically heals you back to full pretty much right, right, and that right. and it has like a one and a half minute cooldown or whatever at the time i, I think that now. yeah, yeah such an important cooldown it was like one of the only things that was keeping him and alive you would, have, you would have problems when there were no ads in the fight yeah <laughs> Yes, I you need more damage. <laughs> right, exactly. Like the, the worst fights were like big bosses that like do nothing but do these huge wind ups and just do all their damage at once, because I wasn't taking any damage except like all at once, once, and I couldn't yeah. get all my little damages together. When there's a dot, it's like yay! Every dot gives me <laughs> ten thousand health, and I'm happy. <laughs> Yeah, that, that was still crazy, but that took a long time. But it was fun, though. It was really, 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 really fun. Like it says, uh, that's how I started following Chill. It yeah. was like, what the hell is this <laughs> not, not doing? doing? <laughs> I've got to see this. Yep. And we still had, um, and we still, and then I had uh, Kira as you know dressed up as a human, uh, you know, the human oh, version right. of, yeah, yeah. Uh, of of of. Um, then you had the of Fiona, <laughs> the poodle Fiona. as donkey. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was funny. Right. <laughs> anyway yeah totally so yeah i'm looking forward to seeing what happens on bad batch um how many do you know how many more episodes there are in the season i don't i think I there's think only a couple more though right 14 to 16 episodes i don't remember it's one of those it's quite two. a few and we're so we're yeah. what more than halfway done right a little bit more than halfway done yes okay well that's good that there's more uh yeah quite a bit more than i thought actually so hey. exciting yeah. Anything else, Kitty? Do you have any special? Uh, oh, I guess the Loken thing is coming up, isn't it? Yeah. Okay. So for anybody that uh, is on the Steel Strong server, we are doing a little goofy little thing with uh, the Loken Guild, mm-hmm. and it's called Loken for Love, where we have <laughs> our player characters that are clones of Loken. Mm-hmm. They have to be imp side. Have to be imp side. Steel Strong server. We're going to get started around 11.30 a.m. We will be streaming, so yep. come and hang out. It'll be fun. We've got a couple of activities we're going to do, but the main activity is when we go and have the strollings, the strolling of the Lokans on Yay, fleet. Yay, that'll we're be fun. Do laps around. and uh, <laughs> with, We're thinking about not being in a group, so that we can all have our Loken companions out as well. <laughs> we double the Loken. Right. I haven't so, gotten but, mine back yet, though. Because, like, yeah, because uh, yeah, I... Oh, right, because you would, yeah. You, he, you uh, mine was um, Bounty Hunter, so he doesn't have... Hmm. He doesn't kind of automatically get Loken back. You can't yeah, just cool. go talk to him and just kind of force him to come along. Right. Um, I have to do it during like during the Rakuo event, and there hasn't been one quite yet. So you can get it started. I can get it started, can but I can't. Started, but I wouldn't actually be able to Rackle have him. Event comes out, yeah. yeah, I'll just it'll just be Loken himself. I'll I'll definitely I want I want to be there. In fact, after the show, I will add it to my uh, to my uh oh yeah calendar. and uh wear so 11 30 a.m pacific oh and you want us to wear pink okay i'll have to and come up with a red. pink or red outfit so, for him then because i'm pretty sure yeah no i have a white and it's like white and blue outfit for it's him right just now. total goofy it's it'll be fun <laughs> we've got some giveaways and stuff like that so if you're around come and hang out it'll be fun all right then i that's a show if you'd like to play with us in the teeny knights guild on the republic side of the satil sean server or in our in the rage 
guild on the Empire side, do a slash C join Utini to join the Utini channel. Then let us know you're a fan of the show. You can email questions and comments about the show to utinicast.gmail.com. Follow us on Twitter using at utinicast or mastodon at utinicast at mastodon.world. You can find contact details for us on our website, utinicast.com, which includes how to subscribe to us using iTunes, Stitcher, and the rest. We record the show live bi weekly, Tuesdays, 4 p.m. Pacific, streaming at twitch.tv slash utinicast. Our theme song is Doomsday by Jean Paul Zogby. And thank you to the chat room. Thank you, chat. We will see you next time. See you next show. All right, Kitty. And what uh, what one, what folks should we uh, raid uh, today? Vodka Girl. Okay, let me get over to the dashboard. Okay. Vodka Girl. Manage stream. Okay. All right. Vodka Girl, was it? Correct. Okay. All one world. Oh, I see. Vodka Girl 19. Thank you. I forgot the 19 part. Here we go. Uh, thank you for coming, everyone. And yeah. So I'm looking forward to the Saturday uh, Loken, Loken walk. That'll be yeah, fun. It's going to be fun. It's so goofy. <laughs> Here we go. There's Hi, the everybody. raid. All right. Stopping the stream. Stop.